Bahtma. Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiat a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falan tajida lahu waliyan murshida wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala A blessed praise We seek abundant peace and blessings upon our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions, and those who follow him until the end of time. To follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a great honor. It is a sharaf. And that's why in Samarqandi he mentions that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam when he was shown the gifts and blessings given to the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah Jalli min hadihi al Ummah. He said, Ya Allah, make me from that Ummah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam located what it means to truly follow him when a man came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want to follow you. And the Prophet said to him, be careful what you say. He said, no, no, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. I have that emotional zeal. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he said, if you follow me, prepare for poverty. In the narration of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set the thermostat because the hukum of the at is the hukum of the ma'atuf. The ruling of what is followed is the ruling of what's following is the ruling of what it follows. So very early on in his mission, he set the thermostat for difficulties and challenges. In fact, immediately after the Qur'an was revealed to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the very few, very few words of the Qur'an, he went with Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha to Waraq ibn Nawfal, and he said to him, Ya layti kuntu jad'an, I wish, that old man said to him, I wish I could be young. إِذْ يُخِجُّكَ قَوْمُكَ When your people will evict you and force you out, the Prophet is shocked. Those people, they will evict me. They will force me out. He said, nobody has come with what you came with except he has enemies. One of the things that we can do as people who struggle to adhere to faith and devotion in very difficult times is to reflect on what Sayyidina Imam al-Junaid. He said, 
Junmin Junurillah. He called these things the soldiers of God. And what is it that he's talking about? Hikayat al Salihin. The stories of the righteous. Junmin Junurillah. Our soldiers, our infantry that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yuthabbitullahu ta'ala, biha qulub awliya'i. He said, Allah uses the stories to strengthen the hearts of the awliya, the believers, the believers, the faithful. And that's why a third of the Quran, according to some scholars, is stories. لِنُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ The Quran says, we stint these stories to strengthen you, to keep you strong, to keep you firm. The stories of the Quran aren't simply to be used to live into the past. But as Al-Ghazali said, I have one reading of the Quran, I finish in three days. I have one reading of the Quran, I finish every week. I have one reading of the Quran, I finish every year. I have one reading of the Quran, I finish every three or four years. And I have one reading of the Quran, I will not finish it before I die. So those stories are meant to be projected into our situation to find commonality and contextual relationship between us and the righteous. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to remind each other of the stories of the salihin and the righteous when he says, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind them of the days of Allah. One of the most important events that's happening according to the majority of Muslim historians with the Prophet ﷺ is the night journey and the ascension. Al-Isra wa al-Mi'raj. And with what's going on in Gaza, the massacre and murder in genocide that we're witnessing in front of us in the land of Isra and Mi'raj, in the land of Al-Anbiya, it would be important for us to reflect momentarily on some of the lessons that we can take from the night journey and the ascension of the Prophet Unfortunately, we find people, they want the barakah before the harakah. People want the blessing without the work. So if you talk about Laylatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj, they say, MashaAllah, Baraka, 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 Baraka. But where is your harakah? وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Allah said, those who work hard, we guide them. But sometimes we put the cart before the horse, the baraka before the work. But if we were to deeply ponder on the impact of Laylatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj in our lives, subhanAllah, that will provide us the strategy to achieve the barakah. That's why he says, Ibn al Ta'Allah, he says, لا تطب الكرامة بل أطب الاستقامة. He says in the hikam, don't seek barakah, seek obedience. Because if I'm obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the outcome is what? Barakah. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ As the Qur'an says. This night is so incredible that at least in the Azhar, it is considered one of the fundamental components you have to learn about the life of the Prophet wasallam to at least get the most minimal degree from the Azhar. Laylatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj. That's why Al Marzuki, Al Maliki, Al Azhari, in his famous poem, he says, Wa qabla hijrati Nabi Isra. In his poem, he says, Before the Hijrah is the night journey of the Prophet. The strong opinion is that it happened on the 27th of this month, the month of Rajab. 
and that it happened six months before the migration of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Mecca and just a few months before Mus'ab ibn Umair came back from Medina for Bay'at al-Aqaba al-Tharitha. But I think it's important that we set the stage in understanding how important Laylatul Isra and Mi'raj is because this is at a very difficult moment in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, Sayyidina Aisha says, Kama Rawahu Muslim, the most difficult day of his life was Ta'if. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And here we take the first lesson that if we truly want to benefit from the night of Isra and Mi'raj, we should all pause and ask ourselves, are we really, really putting forth full effort? Are we really putting forth a full effort to be upright people? to be people of character, to be people of honor, to be people of dignity, to be people of taqwa, to be the people of Allah. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not accept difficult odds as an alibi not to find a way to be near to Allah. And that's the way of the righteous. That's why the wife of Fir'aun, even though she's being tortured, what does she say? Oh my Lord, give me a home near you in Jannah because she know her dua is accepted. What's important to her is qurba min Allah, to be near Allah, nothing else. Oh my Lord, she didn't say fil Jannah, andak. She didn't say, give me in Jannah, near you. She said, give me near you, a home in Jannah. Because the nearness to Allah is more than anything else you could get in Jannah. So her priorities in the Akhirah are reflective of her priorities in the dunya. And the Prophet wasallam, he doesn't give up. Under 65 followers at this moment in Mecca. Things are going very difficult. And he goes to Ta'if. Allah says in the Quran, Fattakullaha mastata'tum. Put forth all your effort to be dutiful to Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ makes effort. And his city rejects him. And Ta'if rejects him. And he's rejected on the face of the earth. And you young people worried about likes and social media? Listen to this. The Prophet ﷺ is rejected by the dunya and rejected by the people on the earth. But Laylatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj says, if everyone in the earth rejected you because you're correct, you're on the truth, know that those in the heavens have accepted you. It doesn't matter how many friends you have if you lose yourself. It doesn't how many, matter how many politicians you're cozy with if you can't speak the haq. It doesn't matter if you lose your principles in trying to achieve this dunya. Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'mineena Allah has purchased the believers and the reward is Jannah. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminds us that if you're going through difficulties for the truth and you may lose certain components of allyship and agency in the dunya but you did it for Allah Know that those in the heavens are with you. As Allah says, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ So I take two quick lessons. Number one, the importance of using the stories of the Qur'an particularly as a source of critical and constructive reference to support ourselves and find guidance. And number two, the barakah doesn't come without the harakah. The blessing doesn't come without work. And the Prophet ﷺ, before the gift of Isra and Mi'raj, has given everything he has. And that's why in the dua, 
in Ta'if, which Imam Asiyuti said is Hassan. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the only thing that I worry about is I angered you. Not, why did you do this to me? Why is this happening? The only thing that worries me is ghadab Allah, is the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yajma'ana ma'a habibina kama amanna bihi wa lam narahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh, innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi la abghi bihi badala. الحمد يبلغ مرضوانه الأمل ثم الصلاة على خير الورى وعلى ساداتنا آله وصحبه الفضل اللهم صل وسلم عليه في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملء الأعلى يا رب العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى in a few places in the Quran records the events of الإسراء and the Mi'raj is mentioned from the hadith of Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu through Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. But it's very interesting to note that Surah Isra begins by saying Subhana. Subhana is translated as by some as glorified. But something I heard from one of my teachers, Shaykh Eid, is that Subhana from Sibaha to swim. The masbah is the swimming pool. Because if somebody to, were to reflect on the infinite number of blessings and wisdoms that are happening on the night of Al-Isra and Mi'raj, they would drown trying to find them all. They would drown in the ma'rif of Allah. They would be consumed and submerged in trying to ascertain the hikam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asra bi Sayyidina wa Habibina Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you say subhana, subhanallah, the idea is that you are in a state of awe. Like those magicians in front of Fir'aun. Wa ulqiya saharatu sajideen, qal wa amanna bi rabbil alameen, rabbi Musa wa Harun. At that moment, nothing matters but Allah. To worship Allah as though you see Him, even though you can't see Him, you know He sees you. Subhanallah. Subhanalladhi asra bi'abdihi. The second lesson that we take, or third, is that success should be coupled with ethics. And that's why Imam Al-Qurtubi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his tafsir, he said that the Prophet ﷺ, this is one of the greatest moments in his nubuwa. His greatest accomplishment, one of them is Laylatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj. But uh, it doesn't say, Subhanalladhi asra bi Sayyid al Alameen wa Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It says, Subhanalladhi asra bi Abdi. So the more successful I become, the more accomplished I become, that should not in, increase my autonomy from Allah, it should increase my reliance on Allah. Because the Prophet's greatest moments in the Quran, Abadan Ida Salla, he's called Abd, 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 the servant of Allah. And in this country, if we want to be successful, true success is not by being the slave of anyone but Allah, the servant of anyone but Allah, to be in the ubudiyah of Allah. As Imam Ibn Ajiba says, the highest maqam is hurriyah, to be free, free from the dunya to be a servant to Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Asra bi abdihi. Asra means to travel at night. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions that he was sleeping. There's two opinions. One is in the Bayt of Umhani, but the strong opinion is that he was sleeping actually in Masjid Al-Haram. The whole area there is called Masjid Al-Haram, but actually in the Masjid itself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the two angels came to him, Sayyidina Jibreel and Sayyidina Mikael, and they woke him up and they stood him up. 
And he said they brought with him Barat. And he describes Barat as a creature with two wings. And he said that Sayyidina Mikael, he held the bridle and Sayyidina Jibreel was next to his, his feet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's the lesson we take from this? A very important principle in maqasid, sharia, in usul of fiqh. Al-asr fil ashai baha. That something new, something new is understood to be permissible. The Prophet ﷺ is presented with this creature he's never seen before, but he embraces, if you will, technology. He embraces something that's going to help him. Oftentimes, we find ourselves, because of the challenges that we face as a community, rejecting using certain components of technology, rejecting things that are going to assist and help the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. But this great axiom, of our scholars of Islamic philosophy says that the origin, the default ruling of all things outside of worship is permissibility. Is permissibility. So the Prophet ﷺ, he doesn't shy away, he embraces. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, lakum ma Everything has been made permissible for you. The last lesson, because of time, is that the Prophet Wasallam's night of Isra and Mi'raj is a reminder, there's two lessons actually, that the leadership, the prophetic leadership of humanity has shifted. And that's why when he goes to Al-Aqsa Wasallam, on the way to Al-Aqsa, Sayyidina Jibreel would show him different important places, in fact they would pray there. And he said, هذه الطيبة This is الطيبة He told him, Medina, its name is طيبة And you will migrate to this place in The authentic narration of the Prophet ﷺ And when he arrives to Bayt al-Maqdis Allah. When he arrives there He meets all of the Prophets And Imam al-Siyuti says something remarkable Because not only does it signify that leadership has changed but it also reminds us of how great our ummah is and how blessed we are to be from the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. We are not a defeated ummah. We are an ummah that suffers from insecurity issues. But we have a great responsibility to humanity. Linnas. And that's why as Siyuti says, all of the Prophets prayed with him ﷺ, but the greatest Sahabi prayed with him also. And some people said, Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Ali. He said, no, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Because when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met Sayyidina Isa on the night of Isra in Mi'raj, Isa was not a prophet, but he was alive. And he prayed behind the Prophet. So he affirmed his iman in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will return as a believer in the Prophet ﷺ. So therefore, when he returns, he will not be a prophet. He will be what? Sahabi. The Shaykh, he said to me, Shaykh Usama, how incredible is an ummah that prophets became part of that ummah. That signifies an incredible responsibility. A great job we have to spread goodness, to contribute to civil society, to spread the light of Islam wherever we are, to be kind and principled in our roles as representatives of Sayyidina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you go to high school, you represent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you drive an Uber, you represent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you're on Capitol Hill, you represent the Prophet. You cannot turn off the light that Allah turned on for you. And the last lesson is Palestine. We are all witnessing what now people are saying, even though it's 2024, is the greatest genocide of this century. The greatest massacre ever witnessed. Today, Brother Mansour, his mother contacted me. The brother from Canada who was kidnapped, who was doing incredible work to help people there. And she's desperate. I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return her son to her as he returned Musa to his mother. But what can we do in the light of Isra and Mi'raj? Because people are worried, I'll get doxxed. Something will happen at my job. There'll be certain challenges. 
after Isra and Mi'raj, Sayyidina Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting next to the Kaaba. ومن ربه أبو جهل and Abu Jahl he passed by him and he noticed something's wrong with him so he said to him what happened what, what's going on now he said last night I went on the night journey and Abu Jahl he began to mock him and to ridicule him and some of the writers of, of the seerah said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he knew that they would reject him that's why there's two qira'ah ma kathaba and the qira of Abi Amr, ma kathaba bi tashdeed al-dhal, that the Prophet did not lie in any way, shape, or form. But he faced the responsibility of truth. And a large number of his followers apostated. And a large number of people left. But those that were true to him stayed. And in many ways, October 7th is like that for us. People that we thought were friends are no longer our friends. People that we may have thought were our enemies are now our friends. قُلْ كُلُّمْ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Our job is just to be the upright, strong, bold, truthful community of the Messenger of Allah. So I encourage you to participate in demonstrations. I encourage you to con your congressmen and your senators. I encourage you to be active. Because this is the response that is needed after the Isra Mi'raj. And that's why the first salah in public is a dhuhr. Why is it called a dhuhr? Idhar Islam amam al nas. It's the first prayer that people saw the Muslims pray, subhanAllah. That's why it's called a dhuhr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our brothers and sisters in Gaza. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring them justice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring those parents and children who are separated back together. And if they were separated by death, may Allah unite them in the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our brothers and sisters in Congo and in the Sudan and in Kashmir in Afghanistan and all over the Muslim world. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين